Hello and welcome to the Dead Unicorn, the tabletop role-playing game club. My name is Corey, and today we got to talk about new changes coming to the lore of Legend of the Five Rings and adventures in Rokugan. This week, Asmodi released a new article talking about the direction that they want to take L5R and the Rokugan franchise into the future. We here at the Dead Unicorn have some opinions on the matter and wanted to share them, especially in the light of our continuing L5R tabletop role-playing game actual play on our sister channel, The Dead Unicorn Live. If you want to read the article, there's a link in the description so you can get the full context. The short of it is, as Modi has hired Asian represents as cultural consultants to review their lore and are taking suggestions by people in the fields of Asian culture and history in order to make the game more representative of East Asia, and to be more respectful to sacred held beliefs of those cultures and people when dealing with the spiritual. There was a long process that was detailed on the podcast Asians Represent. Also, the link is in the description. The first decision of the L5R team was to remove Rokugan spirituality from real-world religions. This includes retooling the lore of the big evil Fu Ling and the Seven Fortunes and other spiritual figures, which I assume will be characters like Amaterasu and Emma O. Oh. Also, the terms Shugenja and Mahosukai will be replaced with Shindoshi, Samurai on the Spirit Path, and Madoshi, Samurai on the Path of Witchcraft. Lastly, they're refreshing the honor system with words like integrity, reputation, and disgrace, and de-emphasizing seppuku in the culture. They also allude to tweaking the clans and making them more representative of specific cultures. As a club, we generally support this idea, and we'd like to say, what took you so long? As fans of Legend of the Five Rings, we love lore, and we want things that increase that immersive feeling of playing this Asian-inspired fantasy. We want to see more lore inspired by real history and culture. We want deeper meaning in our games. We yearn for that. Adding more personality to each clan from different Asian cultures seems to be a no-brainer. So much so that, to me personally, I wasn't sure why they didn't do it a long time ago. In fact, I'd be fine with redefining things in this way with a full restart or reboot of the lore. But I do understand that there are some deep-hearted fans that have a great deal of investment in the lore as is. So a gradual approach to this seems more prudent. A possible downside is that the clans of Rokugan, they have disagreements, they have wars, they sling insults at each other. And binding clans to specific cultures may ape real-world prejudices and biases that were previously just disconnected metaphors before. And of course, this could limit storytelling. The next thing we need to talk about is the disconnecting of Rokugan's religion from real-world religions, which is something many fictions and role-playing games already do. Well, except for some horror games. You'll find many games that feature vampires and demons have direct connections to Christianity and gamify Christian concepts such as faith. These games are set in the supposed real world though, and Rokugan is a fantasy world with no real world locations. So it does make a certain amount of sense to also disconnect the religion the way other fantasy games would. Some of the big fear that I have comes from making the religion seem more generic. They'll have to put in work to make the new characters and the new religious lore seem epic and unique, and not just a reskin of other polytheistic religions like other fantasy games might do. This means meaningful stories around these characters that are impactful to the lore. A turn to the generic might already be seen in the choice for the new name of Rokugan spiritual leaders, Shindoshi, which seems to be a made-up word for the game. One club member pointed out that other fantasy games published in Japan already have a term for priests or monks, Sorio. To them, it's like a game developer saying, oh, no, 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 we can't call a priest in Dungeons & Dragons a cleric because clerics are a spiritual person that exists today. We have to call them divinites as to be respectful to current practicing religions. This leads me to my most significant criticism, and one some in the club share, but 
others don't. And that is of seppuku. If they were taking out references to the act because they don't want people to romanticize it or inspire people to recreate it, I could understand. Even if there's not much evidence for that. But this comes from a cultural angle. While I don't know exactly why they want to downplay it, my instincts say that Asians might be embarrassed by it. It's a dark thing they're not proud of, and I can understand that. But when we talk about a game where we play samurai in a feudal Japan analog, well, to me it's part of the game. And that would be like creating a fantasy game around early America and de-emphasizing slavery because it makes U.S. Southerners feel uncomfortable and therefore not inclusive. As I said, my criticism isn't shared by everyone in the club. As some would note that this is a fantasy game. If seppuku is a hurdle for people's enjoyment and a sticking point as culturally insensitive, perhaps we should do something about it. Using my example of a fantasy game based on early America, they said if a player wanted to play a woman with military rank, well, that would be historically inaccurate. So to hell with historical or cultural accuracy, we should allow it anyways for maximum fun. And that should be built into the game. Whatever side of the argument we were on, we all agreed that this was an important issue. And if it was to be downsized or removed altogether, there should be a replacement offered, something that has real stakes and meaning. At the end of the day, I think these changes will be a net positive and something needed to bring new life to the game. This will give the game both more grounding with people, art, and politics, and more breathing room to expand in different directions in the religious and spiritual area. This could bust open a whole new world and direction for the world and the franchise. I wouldn't even mind a new edition of L5R to codify these changes and clean up the current edition, but we shall see what the future of L5R really holds for us. One final note, most of us at the Dead Unicorn are not of Asian descent, but that doesn't mean we don't have love in our hearts for Asian culture. We want to continue to play these games and write our own ideas and fan-made rules and adventures. We don't have cultural consultants, nor could we afford that. We are just fans using the source material and building on it to create our own adventures as per the instructions of the game itself. I don't want to encourage a sentiment that only people from a specific area can write or portray people from that area. Or if you do, it's somehow culturally insensitive. If you love a culture, you should be able to celebrate it, even if your heritage is different. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Please tell me what you think of these L5R changes. I want to know. And if you want to join our club, there's both our Patreon and our Discord. Thanks to all your continued support.